Hi Virgo Sun and Rising, welcome to your November 2024 Astro Update. It's Raina here. I'm just going to get right into it because there's a lot to cover. Even though, you know, we're past the eclipses and all of that stuff, there still are um, some important transits, very important transits, as it pertains to you and uh, humanity. So on the first of the month, as if to signal all of this, we have a new moon at nine degrees of Scorpio in the third house. The third house in astrology is ruled by Gemini and its ruler is Mercury. Mercury is your ruler too. So it is important the affairs of this house simply because of the rulership. And this is a house of teaching and learning and communication. So anything media related, including social media, is indicated here and there could be new developments with these or new impulses urges to um you know express yourself in some way and maybe to connect with others in that way and so like writing a book or anything is really about this or if you are a teacher and you're in between jobs maybe you hear about a new position that's um coming up. On the second, Mercury goes into Sad. So your ruler goes into Sagittarius, which for you is the fourth house of home and family. So another thing to mention is that Mercury is going to be in that um, third house until the 2nd of November. So if you're listening in October there's a good chance that Mercury has gone, gone in there or is about to go in there. And what this means is that um, the third and the fourth house, what they have in common is both of them are connected to family members. The third house is connected to your siblings, so brothers and sisters, as well as aunts, uncles, and cousins. And sometimes your cousins are like siblings and sometimes your aunt and uncle might be like a father and mother to you in in certain instances and the fourth house can be your mom some people say the fourth house is the father but we would just say one of the parents or both of the parents and so communication in these areas is featured um Uh, it could be the, the fourth house too is um, properties. Uh, so it could be real estate and Mercury can be contracts or it can be like research. Maybe you're researching a certain house or the third house can be like neighborhoods, uh, you know, like your local neighborhood. But the fourth house can be like real estate itself. So you might be doing something along those lines. On the third, Mars goes into Leo. Now, Leo is the sign right before you, Virgo. So this is important from the standpoint of Mars is going to go retrograde in Leo in December and then going goes back into Cancer after that and then goes from Cancer to Leo back and forth. I mean, you know, not... <laughs> more than one time, but until like probably May, June, that it'll still be in Leo. So these, this transit is very important because Leo, I mean, uh, Mars usually only has a transit of like six weeks through a sign, but the, because of the retrograde, it's slowing down. So um, let, I'm not going to talk about the 11th house. I'm just going to talk about what's happening right now as it enters your 12th house. This is a house that is connected to um, your spiritual life. Okay, Mars is like this phys physical um, type of planet. It's it rules the first house in astrology under this. Well, it, it it rules two houses. One is the first. One is the eighth. Uh, the eighth co ruler of Scorpio. But we won't talk about that because really. The first house that is Aries' house that Mars rules 
is the body. And you can see that physicality with Mars because there's this, there's this um, desire to, you know, maybe m m move around, to exert a force on someone, on something. Um, there's just like with Mars, a lot of energy, oozing with energy. So in the 12th house, there's like really nothing for Mars to do because the 12th house is like the house of contemplation, of meditation. So the best you can probably do with Mars in the 12th house is Hatha Yoga. Or you could direct any kind of ambitions that you have to some sort of spiritual career into action that you're taking. So maybe you sign up for that um, meditation course or, you know, or maybe you sign up for Hatha teacher training if that's something that is really um, important to you. But other than that, doing Tai Chi, doing Hatha Yoga, things that will give you like kind of uh, that Zen calm without having to sit still to get there is a great combination. The other thing about Mars in the 12th house is that it can be doing some kind of project that's behind the scenes. So if you have anything that you want to kind of put out there, but you don't want people kind of being naysayers, this can be the time for that. As a matter of fact, you know, Virgo is a sign that often is very hard on itself. And I have the moon in Virgo, so I understand the Virgo energy. And um, it's, it's easy sometimes for people to become discouraged. And this can be people of any sign, but I'm speaking specifically to you guys. Um, because you feel like you're being... Um, told that something isn't going to work and there might be a part of you that kind of believes them and or at least at the very least is like well are they telling the truth what's going on here so being able to think for yourself and not feel like somebody else holds the keys to you to your success or your ability to do something can be a challenge but you have what it takes to make it happen and the way I think one of the best ways to do that is to be a little bit behind the scenes so that you're not necessarily putting everything out there um, so let's see here there sometimes Mars can be like in the 12th house like a secret fling a secret passionate um, you know, a fair type of thing and <laughs> very hot and heavy. But, um, Mars, uh, by the way, the 12th house can be secret enemies and Mars could bring them up secret. We could even call them like secret haters to make it a little bit more benign, you know, so it's not like real enemies, but yeah, some people that don't want you, don't want to see you be successful for whatever reason, and that could spur things, but that could, but that to me only means that you're winning. So don't sweat the small stuff. And eleven, eleven, <laughs> uh, Venus goes into Capricorn, which for Virgo is your fifth house. Now, what what makes this interesting is that there's another planet that has been in Capricorn during this. The last several months and you might know what it is it's Pluto and Pluto is almost out of there but now you have Venus enter this house so I feel like there could be some kind of uh, love interest coming into your life potentially with this and I, I love that it's on 11 11 of course this is a general reading so whether it actually enters your fifth house on 11, 11, that's not necessarily going to be the case, but I still think it's really cool that it's going in there and you have Pluto almost about to leave forever in your lifetime. And Pluto is leaving, 
um, its transformation behind. So you may have found that you have really changed your attitude about love, Virgo. And, you know, for Virgo sun signs who have um, Venus and Virgo, for instance, you may have, some of you may have been doormats, and I, I don't mean to be rude or anything like that, but um, Virgo is a sign that's very humble, unassuming, wants to help other people. That's a perfect storm for a narcissist or somebody who is intent on taking from others, taking energy from others and not giving back. And those kinds of people are troubled people. So, um, you may have to, you may have grown a backbone, um, since Pluto has been transiting the, this area. On the 15th, we have a full moon at 24 degrees of Taurus. This is your ninth house. Uh, and well, and on the same day, Saturn goes direct at 12 degrees of Pisces, and that's in your seventh house of committed partnership. So with the full moon in Taurus, this may have been a time, or this is a time when you are finalizing plans of taking a trip. Now, of course, this is November, so we could call this the start of the holiday season. And some of you may have been trying to get something together. I mean, it's possible that you're finishing up on a trip. Ninth house is long distance. This isn't like a trip to a, a local area or anything like that. And this is all, this can also be like, uh, graduating college, uh, or, you know, maybe you're having your final exams. Something is coming to culmination with ninth house matters. If you have finished writing a book and you're publishing it, but it could be getting a spiritual download from the universe that can, uh, connects with your, um, I was going to say your mission. I don't know if that's specifically ninth house. I, more like your life philosophy and, you know, what you feel is the meaning of life for you. And that can inform the future decisions that you make. On the same day, that Saturn direct in the seventh house can be a time when if you are coupled, it's almost like seeing if all the inner work is going to pay off. Because um, I have heard it said that when Saturn is in the seventh house, it means that a relationship that is very troubled could become kaput and a relationship that is basically sound will survive. Saturn does not like excess. Saturn is all about discipline and organization. Anything that doesn't meet that criteria is not going to last because Saturn is, you know, like this, um, I was thinking of like one of those, uh, what are they called? Drill sergeants or something? Well, you know, like in the, in the military, that's really, you know, in boot camp, you know, trying to get people into shape. And it's like, you know, not easy. But you look back on it and you say, wow, this was really hard to go through. But now we're on the other end and we're still together and we're better than ever. But of course, like I said, some people might go, wow, it was during the Saturn transit in my seventh house when I got divorced. And you know something? It's nothing to fear if you're in the latter camp because sometimes relationships are not working out and you don't want to waste the rest of your life being in a, in a dysfunctional relationship, an incompatible situation. It seems to me that it's always better to, um, cut your losses. Of course, you know, there are mitigating factors. Sometimes I get it, but now that Saturn is direct, um, you should be able to gauge where you're at with your partner, if you're coupled, 
If you're single, it can simply mean that you are taking the topic of marriage seriously. It's like when, when Saturn transits your fifth house, it, that's the house of romance and fun, you know, things you do for fun. And yet the person may be very serious at that time and they mean business. So they're, so the seventh house to me, it's kind of similar when it comes to love, where you're not going to, you know, go into a couple ship or whatever, partnership, coupleship, partnership, unless you know that this is really a viable relationship. And that's a good thing. That's not bad. But for couples who are, um, for people, for Virgos who are coupled, you might have even gone into marital therapy while Saturn was retrograding. I, I can't remember when it went. I think it was in June it went retrograde. I can't remember though. Um, by yourself so that you could just work on yourself. Retrogrades are times to go within and to take the energy of that transit and apply it to yourself rather than apply it to maybe outer forces. On the 19th, Pluto goes back into Aquarius. Now, this is what I was hinting at. As I was saying, big deal for the collective. Pluto will never go into Capricorn in the in your lifetime again. So now that Pluto is in Aquarius, it's affecting your sixth house of work. And this can be a time when you are very like almost like obsessed with power. So you come into a workplace and you're kind of like looking at the office politics or, you know, the dynamics within that space and saying, okay, well, I'm going to do this like Machiavellian tactics. And this is like very out of character. I'm not saying that you are going to do it. I'm saying you could do that and you have to be careful because, uh, it could lead to disharmony in the workplace and, People may not trust you, your coworkers. They may be, they may think that you're trying to take over their jobs or something like that. Pluto in the sixth house can empower you about health and how you can heal yourself, how you can eat cleanly, purify. Pluto can be about purification. But you have to, you know, there's always a risk of eating disorders when Pluto is in the sixth house because of that controlling nature that the person has towards um, their diet. So you have to be able to see how, you know, easy it is to go overboard and vow that you will not, you know, because Pluto can be obsessive. And you don't want to be obsessive about your health. That's not going to lead to good health either. It's about being regenerative, and that's Pluto too. On the 21st, sun goes into Sagittarius, fourth house, so it's shining a light on domestic affairs. And four days later on the 25th, Mercury goes retrograde here at 22 degrees of Sagittarius. So like I said, you know, if there's some kind of a document that's connected to a house, then for sure you want to make sure that everything is okay. Now, if you got like this amazing deal on some property and you're like, oh no, I can't sign it because it's Mercury retrograde. Well, that could, if, if you have the potential to lose that property, that would be absolutely foolish uh, to refuse to sign it. So you have to, you have to like, um, I feel like people should use astrology as a tool, not become a cult member and feel like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm going to just totally buy into everything at all times. You know, there are some times you might be presented with a really good uh, deal. Like, it, and this is not the same as buying a house, but I've had the example, I've had the experience of 
wanting to buy something and it happens to be a Mercury retrograde. Yeah, sometimes I do have to send things back. But you know what? I have to send things back when there aren't Mercury retrogrades either. Keep that in mind. And it isn't always the case where I have to send things back. So, um, you know, treat these transits as kind of like signposts, but you get to decide where you're going to travel. So uh, Mercury will go direct in the middle of December and come out. I think it comes out of its shadow in early January. So it's a very short-lived situation, but it's funny I will say that it's interesting that this is occurring in the fourth house of home and family right before Thanksgiving in the United States. We're having a late Thanksgiving this year on the 28th. I had to double check because I, you know, it sounded impossible to me. I always thought it was the third Thursday of November, but, um, it is, it's almost at the end of November and it's right after Mercury retrograde begins. So um, since this is in your home sector, there might be, maybe there's some kind of miscommunication about who's holding, who's going to have the Christmas dinner, or who's going to have the Thanksgiving dinner. And then there could be uh, arguments about that. So I'm telling you way ahead of time. So that, you know, everything that you communicate with your family, it doesn't get distorted and you don't have any kind of issues with that. Okay, that's what I have for you, Virgo. I hope that this resonated. If you would like a private reading, the link is below. Take care. Bye.